How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, and Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern with Jim Valley. It is Friday on the show. You know what that means? We got uh, SmackDown tonight. You'll never guess what is scheduled for SmackDown. But first, from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, the wrestling world is mourning the passing of Adam Brynjarski, who wrestled as the Royal Stud Adam Windsor at just 41 years old. Slam Wrestling reported he died due to a heart issue, the details of which are not known. Born in England, trainee of Neil Adams, Dory Funk Jr., top star and champion in his Florida-based Bang promotion from 99 through 2005, also champion of the NWA Florida promotion run by Howard Brody. Later married Jade Adams, the daughter of Chris Adams and Jeannie Clark. Neil was Chris's brother. They had three children, worked three WWE Florida house show matches in 2001, had one match in the then NWA TNA, in addition to NWA Wild Side. Dave Meltzer wrote after his original training and Funk Jr. putting him over as a local champion. By 2002, he became a coach at Funk Jr. School. Producer local television show was co-booker of the promotion until the two split up in 2005. Funk Jr. got him some outside dates during that period, including a match in Calgary for a Stampede Wrestling Revival promotion in 2002, where Funk Jr., at the age of 61, teamed with Windsor against Teddy and Bruce Hart. I uh, had not heard his name in a long time. Turns out his last match was back in 2011, but certainly heard the name Adam Windsor a lot in the early part of the 2000s. No details as noted, but a heart issue, 41 years old. So all the best to his friends and family. And uh, if you have anything you want to write about Adam Windsor, you're welcome to do so. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. 425-780-7566. Text messages only. Do not call that number. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Back in a moment with Mike Sempervivi, the news and more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, does anyone want to guess what they're advertising for SmackDown tonight? Anybody? Can I go out on a limb? Go for it. Contract signing? A contract signing has been added to tonight's SmackDown. Head of WrestleMania Backlash, tonight's SmackDown will feature Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey taking part in a contract signing for their match at the pay-per-view. We've already had a match at the pay-per-view. I feel like we've already had a contract signing for this exact same match. But anyway, we got a contract signing between Charlotte and Ronda Rousey. Riddle will face Jay Uso this week. Drew McIntyre faces Sami Zayn in a lumberjack match. And Madcap Moss faces Angel, who does not have a last name. I think what they should do in like that's you know, that's why uh, you know, WWE beats the NFL in social media, whatever their latest gimmick was. I think the NFL needs to drop everybody's last name. They only all the players need to only have a first name. That I think is is what the NFL is is need and the NBA as well. Can you imagine? I mean, actually, it's true. You know, he got over because he was Shaq, not because he was Shaquille O'Neal. We all knew that was his name, but he got over because of Shaq dropping that last name. LeBron, you know. Magic, Kareem. Yeah, these guys are all on a first name basis. So I think that's that's what's going on right here. But it needs to happen more in the NFL. We just need to drop everybody's first name. Golf. Slum. Nobody calls him Tiger Woods. He's just Tiger. Right? <laughs> yeah, but I would Gronk. That work for for all the people out there just, you know, it's you got multiple, you know, Mikes and Peters and you know, things like that, multiple Bryans. Are you going to insist now everybody also have a a unique way to spell their name to, to well, differentiate no, no, themselves no. from if all the others? If there's multiple Bryans on a team, one of them's got to just change his name. Uh, that's, that's all true. there is to it. That's true. That's how Lance Cade became Garrison Cade, because Lance Storm was standing in his way with his first name. See, Larry Bird, for example, would have been much more famous if he was just Larry. Larry? Yeah. 
Yeah, but then hey, what are you doing Saturday afternoon? Some... Let's sit down and watch Larry. Yeah, but but maybe somebody might think you want to watch like Three's Company and like Larry hanging out with Jack at the Regal Beagle. You know, won't this cause confusion in the marketplace? I don't know. Or Bird. They could just call him Bird, you know? But not Bird Man. Yeah, I'm going to get some tickets person. to go see Bird. Bird. Like, are we going to the zoo? No, basketball game. Bird is playing. Oh, okay. Wow. Anyway, uh, let's get to the actual news here. More important than everyone's name. It's names. a slow news day. FTR. I, I, there's a lot going on with this FTR thing. FTR says they pitched the idea of facing each other in an Owen Hart Foundation tournament qualifying match, but are not interested in ever breaking up their team. Appearing on the 300th episode of the Wrestling Perspectives podcast, Cash and Dax spoke about having to fight for being able to face each other in the tournament. It was our idea, Harwood said. We had to fight for it, but that was completely our idea. We've always wanted to have a match, but we didn't want to just have a match just to have a match. There had to be a reason. And this is the perfect reason to do it. The Hart family means a lot to both of us personally and professionally. And so being able to show respect to Owen Hart and his whole family, what better way to do it? Then allowing the two biggest Hart family fans in the world to compete. I like how everybody thinks they're the biggest Hart family fan. And by the way, does anyone not know the finish of that match? I'm not going to say it here, but I think it's patently obvious what's going to happen. And then he <laughs> discusses more about how they don't want to break up and et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, there is this. Bret Hart is believed to have signed a deal with WWE that prevents him from appearing in AEW. Hart is advertised to be in FTR's corner for a big-time wrestling show on June 10th. He is not expected to play the same role in AEW, however. Our own Dave Meltzer reported in Friday's Observer Newsletter, Hart is believed to have signed a deal with WWE that prevents him from appearing in AEW, but allows him to take independent bookings. The reason this is on an indie show and not AEW is that those in AEW over the belief that Hart quietly signed a lucrative WWE deal that would ban him from appearing on AEW shows. But he is allowed to do indie shows, so that loophole allowed this to happen. So yes, AEW announced an Owen Hart Foundation tournament. They had all of those teases on television about Bret Hart, and so WWE threw a bunch of money at him. And more power to them. I mean, yeah. that's the game. It's business here. I mean. And they don't need him to be there to celebrate Owen Hart. This is about Owen Hart, the foundation, Martha, her kids, what they are doing. Everybody else, you know, it would have been nice if he was there. But that's okay. This is about Owen anyway. And I don't blame Brett. Uh, I don't blame WWE, you know, or really anybody, any of these parties here. They all are individuals who do have themselves to look out for. You know, FTR's uh, with AEW for quite a while now. I believe at least a year to two more years. I think they got another year and then a one-year option. And uh, there was that story out a week ago about how WWE was really interested in FTR. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> somebody, you know what's so yeah, funny yeah. about this story? I mean, There's a, lot a couple. Of, a lot of things, but, but... Yeah. So they had FTR. FTR was in NXT having incredible wrestling matches. FTR gets called up to the main roster. Their gimmick is that they are wrestlers. WWE has no clue what to do with them. They had that thing on the that one show where they were humiliated by DX or whatever. Just taken off television. They just desperately won out. WWE, finally, you know, they end up going to AEW. And then, you know what they do in AEW? They have great tag team wrestling matches. They didn't get new gimmicks. They didn't get... Anything. They're the exact same team doing the exact same thing that they were doing. But AEW let them do it. Now they're super over with the AEW audience. And now WWE wants them back. Mm -hmm. For what? To well. do what you could have done with them before they left? I was just thinking about this yesterday. And it was just... It's absolutely mind-blowing to me. I mean, you well. had them. 
it's not like you know you you let somebody go and then they get a new look a new makeover a new character a new whatever cody for example you know they they had cody doing star dust and all this other stuff he goes to aw becomes a big star He's the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. And they let him come back with everything he was doing in AEW. Which is also funny, by the way, that, you know, he got over there and you want that guy. I mean, that's fine and all. But, like, FTR are doing nothing different than what they absolutely 100% could have done the exact same thing with you. And you wouldn't let him do it. And you froze him off television. And you humiliated them. And now you want him back. I was just like, okay, whatever. I mean, I'm sure they do want him back. But this is why it is a, you know, no matter what they do with Cody, because you talked about that, how important it is that they treat Cody in, in trying to bring over other people. And you are right about that, but there's also the underlying piece of if they want you back and they point to Cody and say, see, you know, everything's going to be fine. No, it may not be for you. And with FTR, with the type of wrestlers that they are, the fact that they are wrestlers, not sports entertainers, and that's the whole part of it, that's only going to go so far. So they are far better off where they are, and they're another group now that things are opening up worldwide. I don't know how much they would like to travel. (laughs) Tully and Arn didn't travel that much and go to Japan, but they did go. And I would love to see FTR take a trip over there. Love to see them go to the UK and continue to, to do what they do best. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dynamite Wednesday, 930,000 viewers, down 4.8% from last week. As far as total audience, it was the second lowest of the year, 18 to 49. However, 0.37. Same as last week, and uh, most watched show on cable, excluding the NBA, because the NBA is killing every show. Dynamite's numbers were even with last week in most categories. So uh, compared to the same week in 2021, down 15% in viewers, but steady in the 18 to 49 demo. So that's the update on the uh, Dynamite numbers. Darius Martin. Out of action for, quote, a lengthy period due to injury. According to a report from Fightful Select, 22-year-old sustained a leg injury fairly recently. The nature of the injury not currently known, but he will be out a significant amount of time. Second time in 14 months he will have been sidelined for an extended period of time. February of 2021, he suffered a torn ACL. Just returned on March 2nd, so it's been about six weeks and actually, his last match was on uh, April 15th, so it was about uh, five weeks before he seriously injured his leg again. So uh, best of luck with him, and uh, that's the update there. And also, the Observer this week noted that uh, there had been talk of Daniel Garcia joining the Blackpool Combat Club. However, Chris Jericho personally picked... Garcia to join the Jericho Appreciation Society. And so that's how he ended up with that group. If you recall, uh, Daniel Bryan and John Moxley, Bryan Danielson, have been talking about wanting to form a faction, and they had thrown out various names, including Wheeler Yuta. And one of those other names was Daniel Garcia. So, uh, it's, I mean, I, I have no idea. I mean, if I have no idea if it would have been better if Garcia had been with the Blackpool Combat Club and Wheeler Yuta had been with the Jericho Appreciation Society. But uh, I, How I about do both of them with the Blackpool Combat Club and somebody else with Jericho that would have probably gelled better. Well, although I'll say this. Well, hold on. Here's the thing. Good. Daniel I, Garcia's uh, game should come up. I think that uh, Daniel Garcia's style works better in the Blackpool Combat Club, based on what he had already been doing. However, the idea that you've got a guy like Daniel Garcia, who just does a total, you know, shoot-style, pro-wrestling style, plain trunks, plain boots, plain hair, like, plain everything, and he's the guy in the group that brags about being a sports entertainer and not a wrestler. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) So I think it's working out. 
it should. Yeah, I mean, his his sports entertainment aptitude should go up being around uh, Chris Jericho. That is for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. There, as long as they're featured more, both he and Utah, you know, that's going to be good. Lee Moriarty, you know, got some shine this week before getting beaten up uh, by the rest of the Blackpool Combat Club. But he's another one in that you know realm of guys to keep an eye on as they continue to move forward. All right, we're going to go through all of the feedback. I may even open up the phone lines in the oh final my. segment of the show. been a long time since we did that. That would be fun. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. Don't try calling yet. I'll open up those next. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. I wonder how many of these questions will be about Fauntleroy and your treatment of Fauntleroy. None. I treat him great. Brian, did Bret Hart sign a new contract? Yeah, we just talked about that. That came in. I got a better question for you. Bret versus Sean. All this stuff right now taking place. Everybody loading up behind Bret Hart. You don't find many Shawn Michaels backers anymore when people ask who the greatest of all time is. What are you talking about? You hear a lot of people saying that. If you really? Yeah. I don't know. Everybody seems to be talking about Brett right now. Yeah, the own Heart Cup tournament is coming up. And you've got CM Punk and FTR doing a bunch of matches. Uh-huh. And that's that's led to a lot of people talking about Brett by far always being better than Shawn Michaels. It's never been Well, a the question. problem is poor Shawn Michaels is running NXT, which sucks right now. Poor Shawn Michaels? So well, we know yeah, he didn't want this, this job at all. He was talked into doing this job by Triple H. He he, Triple H begged for a favor from his friend. So yeah. Sean goes to help his buddy. And then the whole thing that he signed up for, they, 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 they rebrand it. They take out all of the great wrestlers. They fire Triple H and all of his friends. And now Sean's running a thing that he never wanted. Are you saying which he sucks? Is, are you saying he is as broke as Stephanie McMahon said he was? And that's why he had to come back? No, oh. he was just, he wanted to help out his buddy. Then why doesn't he just. Stop helping out now, then. If he... Well, I mean, he's being paid. He's, it's his job. I'm sure he enjoys the people he's working with. I'm sure he'd like if it were the old way. I mean, trust me. If you think... Listen, I've never spoken to Shawn Michaels. I don't even think in my life about anything. Maybe I did once. But anyway, I can tell you for a fact that uh, that there are... Among the people that are still working there that were there before... Don't think they're rejoicing in NXT 2.0. They're longing for the days, the back in the day. That is the past, and it's gone. All righty. I feel Bird would have been a better name than Larry. Well, take your pick, dude. I mean, Riddle is probably a better name than Matt, but uh, perhaps others would have been better the other way. No shock on WWE approaching Brett, trying to undercut something the fans want, plowing forward with their nonsensical box of gimmicks, BS booking Bruce Vince. Bro, listen, guys, let's get in the real world. If AEW is doing an Owen Hart tournament and they are constantly teasing Brett Hart and you find out that Brett Hart is not signed with AEW, what do you think they're going to do? Like, obviously, Bret Hart would be of great value to AEW in this tournament and the promotion, managing FTR. They don't want that to happen. So they threw the guy a lot of money at the guy, and he signed with them. And now he's making a lot of money, so all the best to him as well. This is business. This is what happens. In a company that he is always identified with, and he has always wanted to identify himself with, <laughs> you know, it just, I, I don't know. I, the timing of whatever, I just, people, I, I, I guess he's just a pawn. This particular move is just a pawn in the, in the game of people that will just continue to battle this back and forth. I just look at this as separate entities with Owen Hart and what they're doing. I'm just looking at it in that direction. I'm not trying to add in every other heart member to this, even Brett. It doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. He's in the match with FTR for big time wrestling or wherever it is. They will probably do the same somewhere in the South. I wouldn't be fall over shocked about that. If they do that, that's good enough. Isn't that enough? I mean, really, does Brett really have to be there on AEW TV every week? Why? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, none of this matters. 
Got a poll here. Who is better, Brett Hart or Shawn Michaels? Here on the uh, Twitch feed. <laughs> See, and, I knew uh, it was going to happen. It's currently ninety six percent Brett Hart and five uh, percent Shawn Michaels, which is actually a lot farther apart than I would have thought. But even better, in the chat, people are angry at the people who had the temerity to vote for. Is this what this world has come to? See, you've been missing all this. I tried to tell Bro, you. Bro, listen. Hey. Tried to tell if you. If you think that Bret Hart was better than Shawn Michaels, like, that's fine. But what happened in this world where all of a sudden it is an insult to believe that Shawn Michaels was a better worker than Bret Hart? Dude, back in the 90s, there were a lot of people that thought that Shawn Michaels was a better worker than Bret Hart. This is not like saying, who's the better worker? Bret Hart? Or great Kali. And then you're like, who voted for Kali? That I can yeah. understand. But then We're talking always... Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels here. You'd always get egghead Japanese guy in there, too, where it's like, well, you're both wrong. It's Masawa or somebody like that, where it was just That's like, oh, come on, whole... man. Stop muddying on. the whole thing. Oh, now now the Shawn Michaels votes are all coming in. Are you going to blame me for skewing the poll now? WWE FTR thing bots. is, is like when a bots child... bots for Shawn Michaels. WWE FTR thing is like when a child doesn't want to play with their toy until they see some other child playing with their toy. Well, I, like I said, I'll it's give you a great example. It's a lot of okay? business right there. I realize he didn't do a great interview the other day, but if you guys ever saw Juice Robinson when he was in NXT <laughs> and he was named after Pamela Anderson's character on Baywatch, I don't even know why. <laughs> and then, then he went to, to New Japan and it was like a total transformation. I mean, way more charismatic, way better worker, way better matches. Everything about him was multiples better when he went to New Japan. If they would have saw him and went, God, we want this guy back. This guy's great. <laughs> That's one thing. But there was no gimmick change. There was literally, they are doing exactly what you didn't want them to do when you had them. Now you want them back? Well. I mean, bro, if I ran the place, I'd want him back too, but I'm just baffled. Like, what are you going to do when you get them? Do you remember when they wanted the Young Bucks? Remember that? That's totally remember? different. They didn't have no. the Young Bucks before. They still, had that, the same team the doing same, the same I know. thing with the same look and the same gimmick. They did nothing with them. <laughs> now all of a sudden they want to do something with them? Well, well why didn't you do something with them in the first place? Same philosophy, the same reason you would never sign those guys. You didn't want anything to do with them. You can't teach them anything. They're this, that, and the third. But, oh, now we want you. Let's Look, you know what this is. It's business. It's pettiness. It's trying to get one over. It's just basically trying to hurt the other guy. And I don't think FTR is down with that. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you'd like to give us a call here today, the phone lines are open, 844-913-2727, 844-913-2727. And in fact, the phone lines, here we go. Tony, you're on the air. What's happening? Brian, Mike, what's going on, guys? What's up? Hey, so before I get into my main point, I want to give AEW some credit with Satnam Singh. They at least used his real name when they listed his accomplishments. They didn't give him a fake name and say he was drafted by the Dallas Mavericks like they did with, uh, what's his name, Damon Kemp, uh, Gable Stevenson's brother. That's good. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, seriously, when it comes to NXT 2.0, I, I personally, this is my personal opinion, Brian, I know you have your opinion on it, but I don't think it should be on television anymore. I think that they should really just move it back to the network because you really can't get any emotional investment in characters that are just going to get new gimmicks and get new name changes constantly. There's no real point in watching it if it's just going to be like OVW when it was on some local Kentucky station uh, in the mid-2000s. I just don't think there's any value of it being on television when it could just go back to the network, and you know, I just want to get your thoughts on that. Well, bro, there's a big problem with your theory, brother, and that is... The reason it's on the USA Network is because they're making 30 to $40 million a year for it. And on Peacock, they already got their money. It doesn't matter what they do. When, when they're going to promote a pay-per-view and uh, they do all their angles and everything, you're like, ah, I don't care. I mean, they don't care either. <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
if 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 you and a hundred of your buddies sign up for Peacock, WWE sees none of that. They got paid up front. So if they take it off television and they put it on Peacock, they're just out thirty to forty million dollars a year. They get no extra money for people watching it on the network. So I mean, th- at the end of the day, this is all about money. That's it. It's all about we need to make the most money. Are we going to make more money with Raw at two hours or three hours? The question is not, is Raw going to be better at two hours or three hours? Raw will be better at two hours, but they make more money at three hours. So we suffer through three-hour Raws. We got a developmental show, which, by the way, when you mention OVW back on those Kentucky stations, those developmental shows were multiples better than these NXT shows. Yes. These people are so (laughs) green. The booking is whatever. But they're making thirty to forty million dollars a year, and so but that's Brian, why they're. You know what the big difference is? You know, he wasn't Leviathan when he came up to the main roster. Now he was a deacon when he came up to the main roster first, but we'll forget about that. He became Batista. You know what I mean? And there was where, in theory, what they're doing now is really what they want to do with the main roster because they want Braun Breaker to be Braun Breaker. And I know they changed Raquel Gonzalez's name. There are they are I. They're going through a little phase there. But for the most part, that's exactly what they want on NXT. That's what they want these people to be when they come to the main roster. And some cases, they're not going to last as long as others. You know, again, we're going into May here, and I cannot believe we're not going to have some series of cuts, including some people that may have been featured in the last couple of months on NXT that... You know, we're only going to give you X amount of time, and you're going to be gone. You know, I uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but you know the the ideal length of a wrestling show is is ninety, probably about ninety minutes is about the perfect yeah. length. And uh, if you guys watch Raw on Monday night and you skip through every video package and uh, not even every entrance, but if you skip through every replay video package. And commercial. You literally can watch an hour of Raw in 30 minutes. And the show ends up being 90 minutes. So uh, that's something you can... And it's actually, it's uncanny that like every, every single hour on Raw, as long as I've been tracking this, there is exactly 30 minutes of viable content in each hour of the show. If you, it's like, I don't even know how they do it. It's timed, uh, quite frankly, it's timed perfectly where you're going to get 30 minutes and the other 30 minutes is going to be filler and commercials on every single hour of every single Raw and every single SmackDown. I think NXT too, except NXT has that overrun. So it's a little bit more than, uh, than an hour. You know who did the best version of Raw besides obviously WWE when they were at their peak? Memphis. <laughs> Memphis's 90 minute show, which would feature wacky things and longer interviews and interactions with the, you know, between people at the desk. And obviously you scale this for what, you know, things had become, but like that is the ultimate in a 90 minute perfectly timed wrestling show. I mean, as far as getting your fill of a little bit of everything. So. I wonder if we have anybody else calling in. Yeah, we do. Really? Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? Hello? Going once. Yes, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Good. It's going. Actually, yeah. it's not going right uh, now. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, really fast. I would just like to talk about how, uh, how great they really put the cap on the story of um, the black the Blackpool Combat Club. I believe after acquiring after Tony acquired ROH, and you sign a guy like Samoa Joe to come and back you up, booking a match like him versus Minoru Suzuki was a great decision, not only for AEW but for even the thought of um, Ring of Honor doing more shows like the ones that they're planning in Chicago in June. And honestly, if you think about the tag team division and where it is right now, you would think the best thing to do would would be to put the Blackpool Combat Club uh, and its uh, newly invigorated form through We're the Yuta. And how he's been is is, is tremendous. Uh, I honestly appreciate uh, uh, 
um, actually I feel honored to watch that match with him and John Boxer because that was just beautiful the way that ended. It didn't have to end that way. He didn't have to tap out, but it happened. Um, and honestly, I believe if you put them up against the Young Bucks soon, I believe we can finally move on from seeing uh, matches over and over and over again because I think in the back of my mind, that's what I'm afraid of seeing out of AEW moving forward, seeing the same things. And, you know, now we're thinking about who's getting pushed for what, who's on their way out the door and everything like that. And if you think about who's deserving of a championship opportunity, a tag team championship opportunity, um, I believe the Black Bull Combat Club would definitely be a front runner uh, next to names like the Young Bucks again. And who else would you rather see? Well, let me than, say this. Let uh, me Daniel say this. Bryan. I want to I wanna thank you very much for the call. So listen, the other day we were doing Observer Radio, and, uh, you know, Dave was saying, you know, he's a big fan of the Blackpool Combat Club. Their matches have been great. And uh, we need to get the belts on those guys as soon as possible. No. And, uh, and when he said that, I, 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 th- I also thought no. And here's the deal. Listen, you should get belts on them as soon as possible, but it should be the six-man titles, which we don't have yet. But we need ASAP. Because the fact of the matter is, you know who's a hot tag team right now is FTR. And they got FTR, and they got Red Dragon, and they got um, it's FTR, Red Dragon, and uh, Jurassic, Express. Jurassic Express, obviously the champions. And I got all these ideas in my mind leading to the pay-per-view of a three-way feud, all three belts, triple crown. I don't even know if they're going to do any of this. But when I think of all of these things that they could do with those three teams and all of these random sets of belts that they have, they don't need multiple tag team champions. Unify those titles, at least for the time being. And then Blackpool Combat Club is one of like 50 six-man teams that they've got. So do the triple crown of the tag team titles. If you need to give the AAA belts back or whatever, you can. But, I mean, Ring of Honor, if they're going to tour, they need to sell tickets. So I don't see any reason why FTR can't be regulars on Dynamite and also do matches in Ring of Honor as the double crown champions or triple crown or whatever. And then your other set of belts is the six-man titles. We have so many six-man teams. Blackpool Combat Club, first ever six-man tag team champions. Great. Solves that problem. So that's what I would do, but ain't my company. And I disagree with a little bit of the caller in that uh, we we are scared to see too many repeats. I think that's been one of the problems I've had with FTR is, one, I haven't seen them wrestle in tag team matches enough on, you know, the main shows. And two, we didn't get a whole lot of Young Bucks in FTR. We didn't get a whole lot of FTR in anybody. Because they have so many people, things get spread around a little bit. And sometimes you forget about things. I mean, honestly, the whole feud feud with Serena Deeb and Hikaru Shida has been good. But I forgot they were actually feuding when they did the video package because they have so much other stuff going on. So I, I don't think that's really as much of a concern as seeing the same things over and over again. This person here wants to know if I'm going to the Forbidden Door show with Dave. If so, I can treat you to some real Chicago food. Well, first off, I don't know if I'm going. I might. It actually sounds like a lot of fun. But I had real Chicago food last time. Where did you go? I went to a lot of different places. I went to Domino's, <sighs> Burger King, a You're lot of a different places there. Shameful, horrible person. Horrible. Let's see. I have no idea what this person wrote. See, sometimes I like to go to the phones because these text messages are just like gobbledygook. It's like they, you know what I hate about phones? What's that? God. It's been a long time since I gone off on something. I, and it's Jeez. weird. It's weird because I just hate phones. So, you know, I got the phone. You can type on it, write a text message. It's got that stupid keyboard. Oh, one of those newfangled ones. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and this stupid, absolutely stupid autocorrect. Okay. But you know what's worse than autocorrect? When it doesn't autocorrect. Driving I duck hate and them. crazy? I hate them both. <laughs> Never in my life have I ever wanted to use the word ducking. What am I going to write? Some uh, guy's shooting at me, I'm ducking. Why would I ever use the word ducking? Ever in my lifetime. And no matter how many times I fix it, it doesn't save what I fixed. Gah! You need to, and then uh, I turn off autocorrect, and then oh, it's a real mess. Because then it doesn't correct any of my mistakes. 
God, I hate these phones. <laughs> oh man, I could go. You know, on, I think if you I'm put uh, if you put those words as a contact, it will make it much easier, and it won't autocorrect. That's in a much. bunch of my contacts. That doesn't work. <laughs> All right, let's go to Fayetteville. You're on the air. What's going on, Brian? I hope hope you're. Uh... Do you know yesterday was National Get venting? Off My Grass Day? Because it was. Hey, I, I, I feel, I feel you. I understand the frustration of autocorrect and that kind of thing. Also, when you have big fat fingers, you cannot use one of those keys. But I don't. Text. I have skinny, womanly, womanly fingers. Dainty. Dainty. <laughs> I'm like a yeah. skeleton with well. skin. But are you nimble? Unlike like everybody do, else, I guess. Can you do needlepoint and things like that? Do you have? Like, I don't like, try needlepoint, but the fact is, I have perfect fingers for using that keyboard on the phone, and it still doesn't work. Go ahead, John. I feel your pain. I totally feel your pain. I was just going to say, I love this upcoming Forbidden Door thing. And I think it's going to be good for all parties with things opening up again. And I'm with Mike uh, on the FTR thing. I think there's probably a chance that they will entertain the idea of venturing over to New Japan, and I'm all for that. I am all for seeing more of them, and I'm with you on the Blackpool Combat Club thing. They don't need to be the tag team champion. Six men is fine. We need to get that thing going, like you said, because we've got multiple endless arrays of trios and multi-man factions that can make this thing work. And it would be an exciting way to to boost up different things within the shows of Dynamite and Rampage. All right. Well, thank you so much for the call. we got to head to a break, everybody. Observer Live. You know, I do remember that... Um about a week ago, my uh, wife and daughter went to the zoo, and uh, of course I was here working and not spending time with my family, and they went to the zoo, and I'm trying to call them, and they were over by the waterfowl, and anyway, it was so loud, I finally just hung up, and I just texted, would you shut that duck up? Solve that problem. So, hey, we got more. <laughs> Do we have to? Nah, that's it. <laughs> what a week, everybody. It has been. <laughs> I hear the Jim Valley's in Vegas. So, tomorrow, Wrestling Observer Live with Jim Valley. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern is going to be a great show. I don't know what he's going to talk about because he certainly had nothing to talk about today. <laughs> Even Dave's hoping for big news for once. <laughs> but anyway. Well, we got a contract signing tonight. So yeah, we do have that contract signing, so make sure you uh, check that out. Because that's going to be really exciting. They're going to go to sign a paper, and then a fight's going to break out. And uh, Ronda's going to look like she doesn't want to be there. <laughs> Ronda's going to talk. Charlotte's going to take a bad bump. <laughs> and we can talk about all of this this weekend on Wrestling Observer Radio at WrestlingObserver.com. And, of course, we are here every day. Every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sundays, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern with Andrew Zarian, and Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern with the Jim Valley. So check it out, everybody. Don't forget your cameos at 4W Online. It's Earth Day. What better day to get a cameo than Earth Day? And that's it. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.